against TSL. Brought to you by Paul Ludwig. Welcome to Ohana, the map uh, whose name means family. At the top left, the TSL Zerg, formerly NBC Game Hero player, he is. TSL Yun! Yun, such a great player in online tournaments. Smart builder of choice last game. Likes pressure, and now he's up against a very, very strong opponent. The WCS Korea champion starting to the bottom right of Ohana in blue. We have the Protoss player. Kratos Prime! Admired for his builds by a lot of Protoss players. Really, really smart. Uh, revolutionized the way people use forges. Um, I actually just... I think I made this this uh, joke once before, but I, I always imagine Crater uh, in PBT with like his arms are actually forges. He's walking around like he's a, I don't know, a forge man. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't go too well. You know, <laughs> the thing about Creator is he is a beast online. And if not for the WCS Korea, we would still say that he is stuck as a bit in the booth because of nerve issues that apparently he has. This is one of the things that a lot of people, a lot of pro players have been saying about them. They always said if he is able to play in an environment that he likes, if he's able to play at home, for example, where he's really comfortable, he's playing an online tournament, it is so hard to beat this guy. The only reason why people are able to, uh, why he's not able to uh, make the same kind of impression offline is because he's just not adjusting too well at the pressure, the additional pressure that you're just facing. But now with the WCS Korea and the games that we've seen and him just showing a completely different side of his personality where he's like, yes, I'm confident enough, I know that I'm a camera right now, there's a lot of pressure, my team is hoping for a win here, I'm not only playing for myself, he's able to deal with all of this. So now we have two players who have to show that they are uh, offline as strong as online. Jan and Trader are shining online. Create a little bit better offline these days, but this game, uh, I love it. These I love it already. These are two Korean teams that participate in a lot of online tournaments. Marine King, for example, uh, is really similar to these players in that uh, he seems unstoppable online during uh, certain times. But when he plays in the booth, sometimes he's shaky. He's, he's kind of gotten out of that phase, I feel. But there was a time where everyone was saying that about him. Gateway goes down, and everything very normal here. Mikhailer, I have a question for you, uh, as you're a Zerg player, maybe you know Zerg history better. How does the spawning pool, I mean, what exactly is it about the spawning pool that means that you can make Zerglings? Like, it's just a pool of water that's on the ground and suddenly you can make Zerglings. How does that make sense? Yeah, I... <laughs> I know, see? You never thought about before, though, nope. did you? Like, I'm thinking about it right now, and I'm like, wait a minute. Does it mean the Zerglings like spawn in there or something? Then I'm like, no, that doesn't make sense. You can't make links out of spawning pool. You make them out of the hatchery out of larva. Actually, the spawning pool also looks a little bit like there's some kind of, some kind of soup in there. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't eat it though. Looks pretty uh, not so appetizing actually. No, I'd rather, I'd not rather really. eat a, a Zergling leg or something. Yeah, the roasted Zergling is supposed to taste quite tasty. Yeah. For that now, the probe has spotted uh, the third base. Great scouting here. Yep, we have a really normal build now. So this is definitely the time where we are going to see a macro game, where we are going to see a long game between TSL and Prime. So far, most of the matches have been rather short, with the uh, more tricky builds that have been used, especially by Classic, of course, against the first two Zerg players, and then later on by Hyun himself. Now in this game, in particular, we have the third base already coming up. Classic Prime is still on the scoreboard. That's of course Creator Prime. Starts with the C as well. But then again it's a little bit different. Creator oh. at the bottom right, going for the plus one attack timing right now and also the wall gate technology. He's shown the gas to the Overlord as well. Uh, and Overlord of course gets out there wants to save his skin for now. There's the Overlord to the north of Creator's base trying to get a peek. He wants to know if he can see those four gateways. He does check the forge as well, sees that that's spinning away. 
On this map in particular, if you are attacked to the top, then you always want to go with the two base all ins over the right side so that you have a good shot at the choke point can make that work in your favor. We have all ins with uh, stalkers and blink plus two attack. Of course, also the immortal push just in general, and it currently looks like we are going to see immortals. But at the same time, Creator is already working at the rocks to the bottom left of his base. We've seen a lot of Protoss players trying to get the third base up, especially on Ohana. Yeah. And it looks like Creator is going to take, uh, at least he wants to indicate he's taken a third. Um, because he is getting that robotics right now. Could just be for uh, one of these very fast immortal pushes. He only had one gate, now he has a second one. He'll probably add one more. Jan is currently looking at a tech to uh, Lair. He also has the Roachborn. Standard timings here for both Evolution Chamber and Roachborn. The speed link upgrade is now being started after the Lair tech. And he did not have to defend against anything in the early uh, game. Uh, I would really love him to use those creep tumors that he has a bit more aggressive because he needs to spread the creep, especially at his third base in case yeah. there's going to be some two base timing. You gotta at least ha you either have to kill the rocks or you gotta spread the creep. Ideally both, but oh look at this, two more gates. He's definitely going to be trying to hit this immortal push. Yeah. And he's got the plus one armor as well, which further indicates this. Nice pile of place on the top of there. It means he can wall if something crazy happens to him while he's trying to uh, execute this attack. Lair is done, so we should see an Overseer very soon that is going to scout. The infestation pit has been dropped. And how the timing here works out, it could actually, if, he, if he's able to buy some time, Jan that is, that he will have infestors out. And this is always the big question. Are you able to get the infestors against the modal push? Can you fungal the sentries and take them down with the infestors? If you're able to do that, the rest of the Brodos army won't really be able to shield these Immortals that are also important against this. So that's definitely what he wants to go here for. And this could be a very, very close timing with the Immortal now popping out, the War Prism already being queued up. The Overseer is morphing, yeah. but it's a little bit too late for the scout. Yeah, it's just, he's just gonna see everything is, is missing. He's gonna be like, oh, well, everything is gone. Pathogen glance has been started. And the now the Zerglings are trying to buy time. Yeah, he's gonna see the gates now as well. And this is a very scary situation. The melee 12 roaches are started. Oh, he needs this, to buy time. Yeah, he, if he can stop, uh, if he can stop this push initially, then he'll have the upgrades and uh, the infestors. That's that's what he needs here. Yeah. And the path of the lands upgrade is nearly at the point where you can start with the infestors. There they here are. we go. The first two are building, and he's just trying to buy himself some time, get in a good spot. He's actually willing to sacrifice the third here, moving out already. Ah, oh, the force fields. Uh, trap two roaches at least. But now, creator has to attack into this choke point that he doesn't really want to face. Yeah, Guardian Shield goes up. More four seals again. Perfect four seals. Oh my god. Ah, uh, here comes Creator and he's moving in. And here go the first few investors. A little bit late. We have, of course, all those Spanglers doing damage. But TSL Hyun is dropping in he supply dropping already. really fast. The drones kind of awkwardly stumbling on the ramp. The Queens are going down. And the... the the, the, Brian bench, crazy, yeah. the Brian Bench is currently clapping. Creator doing a great job here. TSL Hyun is dropping in supply like crazy. He's down 50 supply already. Yeah, 24 and those links, investors, they were not, not out of time. Yeah, just a little bit too late. The 24 links that come out are all just going to die as they spawn. And Immortal takes out a queen here. A really fast Immortal timing here by Creator with two Immortals. He's not waiting for the third. Dance. Playing this really well. GG. Well done by Creator. He is showing why he is the WCS Korea champion. I have to say that uh, with all this dancing going on, I could see a rivalry forming between these two teams who are so evenly matched. We talked about this before. Both of them have so many star players. Uh, just really top tier teams. I'm I'm excited because this isn't even this isn't even over yet. Creator coming out, takes out another Zerg. But uh, TSL is, even though they are a Zerg team, they're running out of Zergs. <laughs> you know, Creator actually made that look easy. Every single player that faced Jan in the past few weeks has mentioned that it's such a strong opponent to face. But Creator has been so strong with this push. The timing was perfect. He moved out. He did not waver for a second there. He actually just went in. There was no chance for Jan to delay this push even further. And he did not hesitate at all. He didn't go for the third base. He went straight into the natural. And with only two models, he made this work so well. The force fields, they were spot on. And Creator just showing how strong he is these days. Yeah, looking really, really good with that execution. The, the choice to make the investors is 
a tough one. You don't make it, you might still die. You know, even if you make roaches only and you're like, no, I don't have enough time, I'm just going to make only roaches. You could still die if the sources are perfect, your roaches are kind of late. You already bought the infestation pit, which isn't useful to you. But if you do make the infestors and you can't buy enough time, then you die like we just saw. So it's it's a tough choice to make. You may lose either way. It's it's all about when you get the information of he's got the gates and he got it a little bit late. Exactly. Hyun got the information about what exactly was going on when the creator already moved out. So that was definitely tricky. And creator's just playing this a uh, little bit different. Most players are actually waiting for the third immortal, something that he did not do. He moved out with two. He just, you know, to be honest, I feel like he just wasn't really thinking 100% uh, clearly. You know, I was looking around the map. Actually, when you mentioned he's going to morph an overseer soon, I saw one on the production tab. There were four overlords that could have been morphed at that moment to be going into the main base. Yeah. So I was looking all over. I'm like, which one of these overlords is he about to send in? But actually, he morphed an overseer and had it follow the observer at his yeah. main base. He just wasn't like he wasn't in the mindset of I gotta find out what creator is doing. He just wasn't quite thinking like in that zone. At Think that about moment. it like this though. If creator waits for the third immortal then he will face infestors right away. Yeah. And uh, not only two of them, but actually four, and then it will be so easy for Hyun to take down the sentries. So that's definitely a tricky position, but now the TSL team has to send out, I feel, either Polt or Symbol, and it's gonna be Polt! Polt didn't wait, man. He was already, he was walking over, he doesn't even want to be on camera, he's like, I'm just gonna go sit down, how are you set things up? Well, Polt is obviously the right choice here. But something to note about Polt, uh, and I'm sure a lot of people remember this, is he used to be in Prime. Uh, yep. Very good friend of most Prime players, and uh, played with Creator a ton of times. So he's got a little bit of a, a background with the team he's playing against now. So not only with Creator, but other players he may face later on if he wins. But his, his win rate right now in the Team League is not so impressive. Not in Team League, but in general he's uh, in Code S still. Yeah, in Code well, S he's... Well, he was in Code S in the last season, but then he dropped down and he's now the uh, um, the player that is waiting in the third round of Code A. If he wins one more match, then he will be back in Code S. As already mentioned earlier, he might actually end up facing Shine. That's the same scenario that we had the last season. But one thing that we should also mention about uh, Creator is that he has a very, very tough bracket in Code A. He's not even in Code S. This guy is in uh, probably the toughest Code A bracket ever. It's Basically insane. Just Bjorn is there. We, uh, was it Bjorn or Yeah, he has, to play, he, has to, he has to play Bjorn first, yeah. his own teammate. And then he might face MC. So this is going to be uh, the toughest bracket that we've seen in Code A for quite a while. But before we head in the next GSTL match between Polt and Creator, we are, of course, having another five-minute break. So, guys, see you in a few minutes. And then we will be back with Hold up against I don't Creator. know if someone else could handle me but I don't know what I'm supposed to be You're the only one who really sees You get me I 